In this video, we're going to look at one of the key topics to do with trig, which is finding trigonometric ratios. Now, this is really going to test our ability to work with the exact values of sine, cos, and tan. Now, up till this point, we know two different triangles for doing it. We know the triangle that gives us 30 and 60 degrees, and we know the triangle that gives us 45 degrees for each of the three trig functions. What we're going to look at here is being able to get a triangle that gives us the exact value for any angle measurement that we have. Okay, And the way to think about it is to go back to what we know about trig. So we know that if we've got a right angled triangle here, and we pick an angle A that we are after, we have three sides on the triangle. We've got the hypotenuse, the adjacent, and the opposite. And we can get the three trig ratios from this. We can use our Sokotoa to get all three trig ratios. So we can get sine 8 was opposite over hypotenuse, cos 8 was adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan 8 was opposite over adjacent. So these three trig ratios apply for any right angle triangle that is out there in the world. They always work and they always apply to it. However, what we're able to also say is that we, if we get given some sort of an angle sine A equals a value P over a value Q, and the value for A is somewhere between 0 and pi by 2, so 0 and 90 degrees, what we are able to do is form a right angle triangle to display this set of exact values for these angles that exist. Okay, we are able to do that. Because what we can do is imagine taking sine A equals P over Q, setting up and drawing a right angle triangle and naming the angle here A. We know that sine A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. But we know the values of A, the values of sine A are P over Q. So if I compare these two, what I'm able to say is that my opposite side is equal to the value of P, and my hypotenuse is given by the value of Q. So I've got two sides of a given right angle triangle. I've got one side that's missing, but I know how to find a missing side of a right angle triangle. I can use good old Pythagoras theorem. If I use Pythagoras to find this triangle here, I've set up a, a right angle triangle that allows me to get a new set of known values and exact values using our soccer to our ratio. So using this relationship, we're able to get our own set of values. Now this can really, really play quite well when we are given one of the compound angle formula, one of the compound angle expansions, and we're given two exact values from two different triangles and asked to find some sort of relationship or exact value for the overall compound angle formula. And this is what I'm going to show you how to do just now. So let's imagine we've got an example here. Let's imagine that I tell you I've got two angles. I've got one angle such that sine of P equals 4 over 5, and I've got another angle such that sine of Q equals 5 over 13. What I want to find, and what I want to show, is that sine of P plus Q equals 63 over 65. That's the ultimate goal for this question. I want to show that. Well, I've got two angles, P and a Q. Now, the first thing you have to make sure you do is that we have to make sure we don't assume that P and Q are in the same right angle triangle, because that won't work. Angle P exists in one right angle triangle, angle Q exists in another, but what I'm able to do is get two different right angle triangles for both of these. Now a question like this is a show that question, so show that this works. For a question like this we have to show absolutely every single step of working to be given full credit, otherwise it will just be thought that we assumed something was correct, but we have to show something is correct. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my right angle triangle from exact values here. Then I'm going to create my right angle triangle from exact values here. And I'm going to be able to then use my expansion. So the first right angle triangle, we know that we've got sine P equals 4 fifths. So if I name this angle here P, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is 4 and my hypotenuse is 5. So I've got two sides of my right angle triangle there. To get this missing side here, I can use Pythagoras. Now it's a shorter side. So I know that I'm looking to do the square root of 5 squared take away 4 squared. 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16, 25 minus 16 is 9, so it's square root of 9, 
which is 3. So I know that this side here has a length of 3. If I then set up my second right angle triangle here, and call this angle here Q, I know again using Sokotoa, opposite of hypotenuse, I've got a length here of 5 and my hypotenuse is 13. Again, I can use trig. I can use Pythagoras to get my missing side because I know that it's the square root of 13 squared take away 5 squared. 13 squared take away 5 squared is 144, so it's the square root of 144, which is 12. So I know that this side here is equal to 12. So now I have two different right angle triangles that can give me exact values for two angles I'm after, P and Q. Now I know that sine of P plus Q can be expanded using the compound angle formula. Think back to when we did that. This one's given by sine of P cos Q plus cos P sine Q. So what I need to do is I need a value for sine P cos Q cos P and sine Q. Well, I've got my sine P and my sine Q. What I need is my cos Q and my cos P. Well, I have my triangles with the exact values, so now I can get those. So I can get cos P, again, Sokatoa, tells me it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos of P is equal to 3 over 5. And cos of Q is given in here again by adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 12 over 13. So I now have the four values I need to do. I now substitute them in. So sine P is 4 fifths. So I've got 4 fifths times my cos Q, which is 12 over 13 plus cos p, which is 3 fifths, times my sine q, which is 5 over 13. And then it's just simply a case of putting them together. So I get 48 over 65 here, plus 15 over 65 here. Add those two together, and you get 63 over 65. So I've shown that using this expansion for sine p plus q that I covered earlier, and the two triangles I can create using these values here, that this works. I'm able to confirm this is true for these values. So we're able to set up right angle triangles to give us exact values when they're needed. It's a vital skill to be able to do. If we had ever given a relationship like this, so a sine, a cos, or a tan, we use that to create unique right angle triangles that give us exact value answers for the required angles. These can then be used within any of the formula we now know for sine, cos, or tan, or a compound of angle expa expansions to be able to let us calculate an exact value, answer, or prove some sort of numerical identity exactly like this.